At the 2000 Macworld conference in San Francisco, Steve Jobs got up on stage to introduce Apple's newest version of the macOS. macOS 10, today known simply as macOS, from the very beginning was something entirely new, and much more than just a version upgrade from OS 9. As Jobs put it, And even though these operating systems vary in name only by one, they are worlds apart in their technology. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the history of OS X. From its initial public beta release in 2000 to its most recent release, Mojave, which is due to be released in the fall of 2018. But to tell this story, we first need to look at the origins of the operating system, which dates all the way back to the late 80s. In 1989, Steve Jobs was the president and CEO of Next, the company that he founded when he left Apple. Next was a computer hardware and software manufacturer who primarily developed systems for use in business and higher education environments. That year, the company released the first version of their object-oriented operating system known as NextStep. NextStep was based on the Unix mock kernel and used source code from BSD. While it was initially created solely to run on Next machines, it would be ported to other platforms in later years through the use of the OpenStep project. Next step is notable to our story because it served as the foundation of OS X. User interface elements like the dock and many bundled OS X applications can all be traced back to Next Step. In the mid-90s, Apple Computer was facing a problem. Their computer operating system, called macOS, was reaching the end of its life. The foundation of the OS had been pushed to its limits, and was looking increasingly outdated compared to its main competitor, Microsoft Windows. After a few failed attempts at replacing it, the company decided instead to buy out Next for $427 million in 1997. Apple's plan was to use the technologies developed at Next as the core foundation foundation of their next generation OS. The first iteration of this concept was released in late 1998 to developers, known as Rhapsody. At first, Rhapsody looked very promising. At its core was OpenStep, a later version of NextStep, based on the much more stable mock kernel. On top of this stable foundation was the familiar macOS look and feel, and the ability to run macOS apps. There were a few Next applications that remained, including the Workspace Manager, which replaced the Finder entirely in this version. However, problems quickly arose. You see, for a macOS application to take advantage of the OpenStep libraries and new features, it had to be rewritten from the ground up, which no software developer wanted to do. To solve this, Apple later replaced the compatibility layer of Rhapsody, known then as the Blue Box, with what they called Carbon. Carbon allowed for existing macOS applications to take advantage of new features by only requiring a small tune-up rather than an entire rewrite. Eventually, this new OS would be named macOS X Server 1.0, the first Apple OS branded under the macOS X name. Eventually, Apple renamed the open source technologies they had been using to what became known as Darwin. Darwin was released for free in late 2000 under the Apple Public Source License. You can still download Darwin today from Apple's open source website. In September of the year 2000, Apple released a $30 public beta of macOS X. This release was the first publicly available one, and was intended to get feedback from Apple's user base. One major feature of this beta was the introduction of the Aqua user interface to the public. This UI design was a major departure from the classic macOS's platinum design language. The menu bar, window borders, buttons, and other various UI elements were completely redesigned. New features like the dock were also implemented. A few months later, in March of 2001, Apple officially released the first version of macOS X. Cheetah, as it became to be known, was received with mixed reviews. The OS was slow, and did not have many applications available for it at launch. But this 
This, as well as the initial growing pains, is to be expected for an entirely new platform, so some critics were able to cut it some slack. Apple followed up six months later with version 10.1, or Puma. This version contained a few notable improvements, such as the ability to play DVDs, and was much more stable than the previous version. Although, some critics still felt that 10.1's improvements were not enough for them to ditch the more familiar macOS 9 to use OS X exclusively. Apple eventually pre-installed version 10.1.2 as the default OS on new Macs. 2002 saw the release of version 10.2 of macOS X. This version, Jaguar, was the first to be publicly marketed with the Big Cat naming scheme. In this version were more performance improvements, which were received generally well by consumers. Jaguar also marked the death of the Happy Mac startup screen, which had been used since System Software 1 on the original Macintosh in 1984. It was replaced with the modern Apple logo boot screen that is still used today. Just over a year later, in October of 2003, Apple released OS 10.3 Panther. This release brought the most extensive overhaul to OS 10 yet. Panther updated the Finder with a new look, introduced fast user switching, and introduced Exposé, an interface allowing the user to have a bird's eye view of all the applications running on their machine. Mac OS X Tiger, the fifth release of Mac OS X, was introduced in April of 2005. This version contained numerous UI enhancements, including the introduction of Spotlight Search. During Tiger's lifespan, Apple announced the switch from PowerPC to Intel processors. During the 2005 Worldwide Developers Conference, Steve Jobs demonstrated an Intel machine running OS X Tiger. However, Tiger was not the first version of OS X to support Intel processors. In fact, Apple had been secretly doing that since the Rhapsody project in the late 90s. The next major version of Mac OS X, 10.5 Leopard, was released over two years after Tiger was introduced in 2005. Apple initially wanted to release Leopard in late 2006, but development was pushed back due to the introduction of the iPhone in January 2007. When it was eventually released, Leopard brought some new major features to the Mac that many people still use today. The file backup tool Time Machine was introduced, as well as Boot Camp, which allowed Mac users to install Microsoft Windows alongside OS X. Leopard also updated the design of a few user interface elements like the dock, which now had a 3D-like tray as opposed to a flat 2D one. In 2009, Apple released Mac OS X Snow Leopard, which as the name suggests, is a refinement to Leopard. Snow Leopard had a major focus on improving the overall performance of the OS. It was also the first version of Mac OS X to not support PowerPC processors, as Apple had been going through the transition of moving away from that platform. Snow Leopard can actually still be purchased in both the Mac App Store and Apple's online store today for $19.99. Mac OS X Lion, the successor to Snow Leopard, was announced at Apple's Back to the Mac event in October of 2010. Alongside it, Apple also announced the Mac App Store, which was very much like the iOS App Store just for OS X apps. In addition to the App Store, Lion introduced a few iOS-like features to the Mac, including Launchpad, which, when opened, would take the user to a grid-like interface that resembled the iOS home screen. Unlike all previous versions of Mac OS X, Lion did not include a welcome video upon its first boot. It was also the first version of OS X to be sold exclusively in the Mac App Store or rather than on physical media. In July of 2012, Apple released OS X Mountain Lion, which, much like Snow Leopard is to Leopard, was a release focused on refining a lot of the features introduced in Lion. Mountain Lion introduced a few new applications to the Mac, including reminders and notes, which closely resembled their iOS counterparts. Mountain Lion also introduced more iOS-like features. Notification Center allowed users to have a one-stop shop for all application notifications. iChat, which was previously Apple's IM client for the Mac, was replaced entirely with the new Messages app. This app allowed for users to communicate with other iMessage users from their Mac. Mountain Lion also changed the name of the operating system from Mac OS X to simply OS X. After Mountain Lion, Apple introduced OS X Mavericks, which brought many notable changes to OS X. Apple dropped the Big Cat naming scheme that was used since the introduction of Mac OS X, 
and instead decided to name future releases based on places in California. Mavericks got its name from the beach located 25 miles away from San Francisco. This release had a focus on usability improvements such as battery life. Probably the most notable feature of Mavericks was the change in price. For the first time ever, Apple offered OS X Mavericks as a free upgrade to anybody running Snow Leopard or later. The next release of OS X, Yosemite, was released in 2014 and named after the Yosemite National Park in Northern California. This release brought a huge user interface overhaul. This new design resembled iOS 7, which got rid of skeuomorphism and made the overall user interface look much more flat and translucent. Another big feature was the introduction of Handoff, which allowed for more integration between the Mac and iOS devices. Users could now send regular SMS messages and make phone calls from their Mac. In 2015, Apple released OS X El Capitan, named after the summit located in Yosemite National Park. El Capitan was intended to be a refinement to Yosemite and includes improvements to both the security and usability of the operating system. Apple also replaced the Helvetica New system-wide typeface to their own San Francisco typeface. Starting with Mac OS Sierra in 2016, Apple dropped the OS X name and adopted the previously used and more simple Mac OS name. The name was stylized to better fit among iOS and tvOS in Apple's ecosystem. Sierra was named after the Sierra Nevada mountain range. It introduced Siri and Apple Pay to the Mac for the first time. Apple also added support for a new file system called APFS or Apple File System. This new file system would replace HFS Plus, however both file system types are supported in the OS. Mac OS High Sierra was released in September of 2017. Like El Capitan, Mountain Lion, and Snow Leopard, it had a main focus on refining many of the features introduced in Sierra. Starting in this release, Apple made their new APFS file system the default one for new installs. High Sierra also brought minor updates to a few default apps, including photos and mail, and brought many performance improvements. And all of this brings us to the modern day. Just over a month ago, on June 4th, 2018, Apple announced and previewed their newest version of the macOS, called Mojave. Mojave is, appropriately, named after the Mojave Desert. In this release, Apple brought many welcomed features to the Mac. The App Store got a redesign, and FaceTime calls will now support group calling with up to 32 people. Apple also ported a few stock iOS apps over to the Mac, including stocks, voice memos, and news. On top of all of that, a proper dark mode was added to the OS for the first time. And that concludes the history of Mac OS X. I'd like to thank all of you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.